Hello folks, welcome to a session on the virtual router redundancy protocol on Solaris 11 operating platform. This session is a re-recording of a video that was posted earlier on the website. A couple of folks who watched that video came to me with the feedback that watching that video on VRRP was not the best of the user experience because the video was completely out of sync with audio. For that reason, I am doing a re-recording of the VRRP configuration on Solaris 11. In case if you had time to manage, uh, time to watch that earlier recording and uh, you understood the configuration done on the Solaris 11, then you may kindly ignore this video. I'm going to walk you through the steps uh, that are performed on Solaris 11 to configure a machine as VRRP router. Before I do so, a couple of words about virtual router redundancy protocol. It is of course a high availability facility. Uh, high availability is anyone's concern. Even if we are a user of free services, we do not like a service going down. Uh, we could take up the example of a Gmail account or a Facebook account or a Twitter account regardless of the fact that we don't pay a penny for those services in case if the service go down we get annoyed. So we, needless to talk about the customers then who pay for the service they cannot afford to have downtime of their service. When you talk about high availability we have to talk about high availability at all levels. If you are talking about a system that boots up from the hard disk then I cannot have a hard disk failure which will prevent the system from booting up. So I go with a solution like boot disk mirroring where two disks would contain the boot data so that in case if one disk fails I would still be able to boot the system up. Or feature like an IPMP in Solaris 11 where if one network port fails I would still be able to access the machine using the second network port or bonding in Linux operating system which by and large gives us the same facility as IPMP if one of the network port fails I would still be able to access the Linux machine through the other network port. So we are talking about high availability at all levels. A client shouldn't at any cost lose access to the system. Same is the case with a component like router. Router is a very critical component in a network infrastructure. It connects one network with the other network. A classic example of a router would be your connection from LAN to WAN. The packets that are sent to the outside world from your local area network has to go through a router. It is a router who routes that packet appropriately to the wide area network. What if there is only one router configured on your infrastructure? If that router fails, obviously your LAN wouldn't find a route to, uh, to send the packet across to the WAN. So we cannot afford to have a router failure also. That is why there was a protocol that was developed called VRRP which stands for Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol where there would be two physical routers. If one of the physical routers fail, I would still be able to use the second physical router. Like any other high availability solution, there would only one IP, there would only be one router IP which is what we refer to as a virtual router IP. That virtual router IP is going to be active only on one physical router, which is what we refer to as a master router. In the event the master router fails, that one virtual IP which was active on the master router would now be active on the backup router. That's how the virtual router redundancy protocol works. So there are two physical routers, two physical boxes, two hardware boxes. Each of these hardware box would be a part of the VRRP configuration. There would only be one router IP active only on one node at a given point in time and that node is the master router. In the event the master router fails, the router IP, the virtual router IP will fail over to the backup router and you wouldn't lose access to a router to route your packets across to the van. So that's the idea here. Uh, Solaris 11 introduced the VRRP from 11.0 uh, onwards, I mean ever since the inception of Solaris 11, ever since the Solaris 11 came into the existence way back in 2011, VRRP was a part of the operating platform. With the recently released Solaris 11, 11.2, there has been an enhancement around the VRRP. Earlier releases required 
us to create a very special VNIC to configure VRRP that was referred to as L2 type VRRP. But from 11.2 onwards, there is much more flexibility in the sense that you do not need a special VNIC to configure the router. You could even have a router configured on top of an IPMP network. So I'm going to show you that type of VRRP wherein I'm going to use an IPMP as an underlying network interface for configuring the VRRP. Such a VRRP is referred to as L3 type VRRP and it has to be configured on an 11.2 machine. It cannot be configured on any of the previous releases of the Solaris 11 operating platform. So if you look at my window here, uh, there are three machines that have opened. In fact, there are three terminals on my machine. Each of this terminal represents one of those Solaris 11 boxes that I'm using. Um, it is very clear from the prompt on the terminal that each of the term each of the terminal belongs to a different host. Uh, Sys02 is one host. Sys01 is another one and Sys00 is a third machine that we are using. So these three are three Solaris 11 boxes. What I would be doing is to configure one of these boxes, say Sys01 as the master router where the floating IP, the router IP is going to be active. Then I would be configuring Sys02 as the backup router which will have the router IP, the floating IP, but will not be active until the master goes down. If even the master goes down, the floating IP that is there on the master would fail over to the backup. So that's exactly the demonstration we're going to go through over the next few minutes. The role of Sys00 in this demonstration is to do a snoop or probably to ping uh, the router and we will see that the ping doesn't get broken in case if the master goes down because the ping continuously would happen uh, because the other one would take over that IP. So let's go ahead and configure virtual router redundancy protocol on Solaris 11 platform. Before we do any kind of configuration, it is important that we find out we have installed the required package to configure the VRRP. The name of the package is VRRP and that information about whether the package is installed or not we can figure that out by using the pkg info vrrp uh, because i wanted to save some time i've installed this package up front so this doesn't come by default if you would like to configure your solaris 11 machine as a vrrp then you will have to install this package vrrp and you can do that by running the command pkg install vrrp Let's verify the same thing is done on this machine as well. We'll run the command pkg info vrrp to verify that the package is installed on sys01 as well. Again, uh, in this example, we're going to walk through uh, vrrp on the IPMP. That is, it's a L3 type vrrp that we are planning to configure here. Um, in a separate video, maybe, I would show you the IPMP on Solaris 10 and Solaris 11 operating platform. For now, I hope most of you are aware that IPMP is a facility that is that is to make sure that there is high availability at the network port level also. In the event one of the network ports fail, I would still be able to access the machine using the other network port. IPMP configuration in Solaris 11 is fairly straightforward. There have been a couple of my friends who asked details around the IPMP configuration. So I would be making a separate video, a separate episode probably on the internet protocol multipathing on Solaris 10 as well as Solaris 11. Since the focus of this video is to configure VRRP, I had created a VRRP, I had created an IPMP upfront. We can verify that running the command IPMP stat minus G. There is an IPMP that is already configured. We could also find out if there is an IP address on that IPMP. As of now, there is no IP address uh, on the IPMP0 interface. So let's go ahead and configure this as a router. It's quite a straightforward step. The only one command you might want to keep in mind is VRRP ADM create router. Uh, of course, I need to specify what type of router is this. Remember from 11.2 onwards, uh, we have a facility to use L3 type which gives us the flexibility to configure the router on top of IPMP as well. Uh, if you were running 11.1 machine, a Solaris 11.1 machine, then you had to create a 
V-nick, a dedicated V-nick, a special V-nick, and only that V-nick you could use for the VRRP router. Uh, I should also mention what is a router ID. It's a unique number. Uh, and then I should mention what is the protocol that I intend to use. When I say protocol, it means to say IPv4 or IPv6. Uh, if I mention it as INET, I intend to mean uh, IPv4. If I specify it as INET6, that would be IPv6. Uh, then I would specify an IP address. Uh, mind you, this is not the IP address that I'm planning for my router. This is actually an IP address I want to configure on top of IPMP. But this is why, what we refer to as a primary IP address. This has nothing to do with the router. This is just another IP address on top of the IPMP0 interface. I should then mention what is the IP address I need to mention for the router. This is this as 192.168.10.200. Now this is the virtual IP I was referring to, the floating IP I was referring to. This IP address 192.168.10.200 is going to be active only on one node. And one, if this one node goes down, the master node, then the IP address 10.200 is likely to fail over to the other router that exists in your site which is a backup router. Now comes a very important parameter in this command called the priority. Priority is a number ranging from 0 to 255. The higher the value, the higher the priority. It is based on this priority that an election is done among the routers to figure out who is going to act as a master and who are going to act as backup routers. 255 is the maximum number you can assign. Since my intention here is to use Sys01 as the master router all the time this machine is up, I would use 255 as a value here then I specify the name of the router. Now one of the important uh, arguments I missed down in this command is to specify what is the uh, port, what is the interface on which I would like to configure this router. Very clearly IPMP0 is what I was planning and that's what I'm using in this step. Now let's go on with this command and see if this goes through fine. Looks like the command went through quite fine. The router by the name VRRP1 is created with a priority of 255, the router IP address is 10.200, there is also one more IP assigned to it in the form of 10.198, it's created on top of IPMP0, the ID of this router is 1 and this is of IPv4 protocol. We can verify this by running the command vrrpadm show hyphen uh, vrrpadm show hyphen router. Uh, there you go, you get to see that the state of this router is master. Uh, and then you can also see the priority is 255 among the other options are the type which is L3 type. Remember L2 type was the only type till Solaris 11.1 .1, where you had to create a dedicated VNIC, a special VNIC for all of this to work. We can also verify the uh, address here. Uh, there you can see there is a VRRP type IP address configured. You can also see the state is okay. That means this is the active router. Now we'll go and do the same thing on the sys02 as well. I think the command is going to be quite straightforward now for you. It's going to be vrrpadm create hyphen router minus i. I want to do it on top of ipmp minus a. The protocol is ipv4 uh, minus v. The router id is 1 uh, minus uh, minus what else? Uh, minus capital P 192.168.10.199 minus a 192.168.10.200 which happens to be the router IP address and the priority is because this is going to be a backup router and the name of the router is VRRP1. Uh, looks like there is something that I missed somewhere. Yes, uh, I have to specify the type. If I do not do that, then it is going to be L2 by default. So I have specified the type and of course L2 is not going to work here because I'm using IPMP0 as an underlying interface card. L2 requires us to use the VNIC, special VNIC that we created using the DLEDM command. So let's go ahead and uh, create the router. You might have seen that uh, uh, the router is configured. Uh, what is also interesting here is to know that the IP address is down here because this IP address is the floating router IP address that's active only on one router at a given point in time. We can also verify the show router command to see 
uh, that the state of this router is backup, it's actually not a master router because of the priority that we have given and that's 100. Now let's do a ping of this router, ping 192.168.10.200 which happens to be the router IP address. Uh, you can see that it's down on SS02. Now I'm going to do something really, really nasty. I don't recommend you to do it on the production system, especially just to test whether the VRRP is running or not. So, but I can safely do that. I'm running the init six command, nasty thing to shut down a machine. Let's go back to the ping and see if the ping is continuous. The ping seems to be continuous, except that there was a slight bit of latency in the middle, but otherwise the ping seems to be going through quite fine. Uh, let's go back to the backup router here. You would observe that the state of this router is backup and that the IP address was down. Now let's see what has happened to the IP address here. If we drag this a bit up, you can see that the status of this IP is okay. It was actually down some time back. Now the status says it is okay. We can also verify what is the router. It is actually a master now. Uh, apologies for the background noise there. I'm sure you would have heard some crackers blowing in the background. That's because today happens to be the Diwali here and there is a whole lot of celebration happening in the background. But I hope you have understood the configuration of the virtual router redundancy protocol on Solaris 11 operating system. Thank you so much for watching.